All right, welcome back to Fast Money tonight. We've got a bit of a buzzkill on Tesla. The stock down almost 7% today, erasing its gains, now negative on the year. And there are some new concerns that Tesla's Cybertruck could be delayed. There are reports the company removed the reference to the year 2022. Need I remind you, that's this year. From its website around production timing for the truck. Something to keep an eye on. Will that truck be delayed? Tesla hitting the skids, but check out the moves in Ford and GM. Ford stock hitting its highest level since July of 2021, topping $100 billion in market value for the first time ever. Guy, you have flagged this move. Good call there. What is the trade? And by the way, do you think now is the time for Ford to sell its stake in Rivian? Something Jim Cramer has talked about. Well, first of all, it's not, you know, I'd like to think it was just me, but it's not. I mean, Pete's been on it, Karen and Tim, Tim without question for quite some time. And what we've tried to point out is the market's going to finally reward both Ford and GM in terms of valuation. And you're seeing it play out over the last couple of months. I do still think there's room to the upside in Ford. I mean, you put a 14 multiple ish on a little more than $2 they're going to earn. You get a stock that's going to approach $30, I think. And I'll stand by that in terms of selling their stake in Rivian. I mean, if Jim says they should do it, then I'm not going to argue with Jim. My, my instincts is they should probably hold on a little bit longer. Karen, your thoughts? Well, I think if, if what you're talking about, Tesla, is true, that's clearly very good news for Ford, right? I think the F-150 is, is available for deliveries this spring, if I'm not mistaken. Not quite as good news for GM. I don't think the Chevy Silverado will be until next spring of 23. So to the extent if that Tesla truck is, uh, they are going to produce it later, um, then that's much more helpful for Ford. I've been in GM, which, as Guy points out, it's really a value play. They obviously don't get anywhere remotely close to anything in the same stratosphere as Tesla in terms of their business. But they've got to show that their EV business really works, that they haven't yet right yeah. they have the hummer and they have the bolt and the, not particularly exciting so they have to they have to step up and they will see how the lyric does so i get why they don't get anything close to that but the multiple they do get seems cheap yeah. to me so even though it's run a lot i'm still long gm yeah the volt was the pontiac aztec of electric cars tim but i do wonder <laughs> i know we love to talk about evs right because <laughs> they're, they're such fast growers i get it but I wonder if we're not, if we're just discounting and forgetting the core business of GM and Ford. The fact that most Americans are going to buy a Chevy Tahoe, which, by the way, now costs like $80,000 fully loaded. And the profit margins have got to be high. EVs are sexy. But even if they're 10 percent of the market, they're still 10 percent of the market. Well, yeah. And by the way, you joke about the gremlin, but I know you're driving an AMC Pacer in high school. And by the way, that probably made you cool. So <laughs> a hornet. It, it's all good. Actually, a I, hornet. I think we rolled it. <laughs> we okay. rolled a hornet. All right. I'm not kidding. So, so I, I believe you. I believe you. So, so look, you have a case here where the analysts are actually starting to question what the value is of the internal combustion engine business. And if you look at a lot of the analysts, in fact, they're giving uh, the legacy business almost zero terminal value uh, on DCFs. So actually, it really is turning into only EV call, which should make Ford and GM that much more valuable on multiple. Because guess what? Tesla is a car company, right? It's a car company, and that's how we're valuing it. I know we tried to do 15 other things, and great for the people that were long, but I, I, it's a case where then that's why you need to value GM and Ford more like an EV play. Ford's going to have 600,000 EVs on the road in 24. Um, I think that's a great story, by the way. For Tesla, folks, you know, I would not be that upset about the, 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 the pickup being pushed back. I mean, their production numbers are through the roof. I mean, that, they're concentrating on getting cars off the yeah. assembly line, and it's working. This is a story about Ford and GM being undervalued on multiple, even if you do nothing with their legacy business. So here you go, Pete and Jerry, and I'm on my little handy dandy laptop here and I go, I'm looking at, I'm going to show our viewers, I'm looking at prices of Ford F-150s, not electric F-150s, not no. Lightnings, not Raptors. They're $65,000 to $75,000. I mean, we're, I know yes. we love to talk about EVs. It's great. They're growing. They're sexy. They're fun. They're fast. They're cool. But people are paying $75,000 for a truck that cost $55,000 a few years ago. Yeah.
You, you want to talk about inflation. How about that? I mean, when you look at some of those numbers, Brian, it's absolutely incredible. Now, the Ford business is awesome. Tim's been all over this one. It's been great. He was on there long before me. I can tell you back in September, we started seeing call buying in here, and it just continued to accelerate. We hit five or six times per month all the way up until most recently, and we can continue to see option activity in Ford today. So people are not done yet, Tim. They're still coming after it, and they're still looking for this yeah. stock to go even a little bit higher, maybe a couple of dollars higher. So I think that's really interesting yeah. because of that. It's all really predicated on this, this whole EV world, though. It really is. I mean, that's the stock move that we are seeing. And the pricing of Ford, yes, I know. they're not giving the old engine enough. They're not giving it enough credit. But the, the dollars, <laughs> like you're pointing out, that shows you that shows you the margin potential that they've got. But they are having to deal with all the labor shortage. They are having to deal with everything else that we hear about each and every day. So that is an issue, and they are actually able to make up for that with uh, some of the prices they're getting right now.